Hey, and Mike Van Duzzi from Keep On Growing. And there's been a lot of interest in the off-grid grow towers that we've been showing off. There's also been a lot of questions. So today we're gonna try and answer some of your most asked questions. Okay, so if you've seen any of these videos, if not, you know, go check them out. Um, we built some grow towers and we've been showing them off on all the different platforms. So we've got a lot of comments, I mean like thousands of them. And even though, you know, a lot of them are like, great job and, and I want to, my favorite is I want, I'm going to do that. You know, people take the information and they actually do something with it. Uh, those are my favorite. There's a lot of those. You guys can go through all the comments and see them, but you can also go through and see there's also a lot of questions. Now we're going to go through and, and uh, go over some of the most popular ones. This won't be answer like every question because there's a lot of questions, but hopefully this will answer a majority of them. So instead of answering the same question over and over and over, I figured I'd make a quick video. That way if people ask one of those questions, I can just give them a link to this. And if, if I give you a link to this video, it's not because I'm just trying to ignore you or glaze over it. It's just the sheer amount of questions that we get and comments. It just makes it impossible to answer each and every one. So I hope that this helps because I'd rather give you a link to a video where you can find the information than for you to think that I was just ignoring you and you don't try this at all because I want everyone to give this a try. Alrighty? Hey, so we're going to get started and this is in no particular order. This is just some of the most popular, most asked questions, okay? Alright, we're going to start with the obvious one is what are those spongy green things? Now a lot of you already know what this is and some of you who didn't even know guessed I've, I've been watching the comments and you help each other and tell each other too so if you see somebody asking and you know it's a pool noodle go ahead and tell them that now these come in four foot lengths over here in america kids play with these in the summer in the pool at the beach or whatever and when you take them and you slice them up they resemble a cloning collar and all we do is just cut a little wedge out of it pair of scissors nice and easy cut a little wedge out put it in the middle and close it up and it pops right in there so that's just a really cheap way like I said if you can afford cloning collars if you can afford hydroponic supplies you know go get them you know that's that's cool I'm not saying you know there's anything bad with them it's just that these came out to about two or three cents a piece so I was able to use a lot of them because I did a lot of experimenting and I didn't feel like I was wasting a whole lot of money whenever I had to get rid of these and, and use new ones. So out of a four foot pool noodle, you get about, you can get about 50 of them out of there. Now, one other thing is they're easy to use. Like I said, you can just cut them with scissors, a sharp knife, a razor. I have a long blade and it just cuts right through it. And you can also do them in a different shapes. So some of you, if you're doing bigger plants, like if you do pak choy or or mint that's just gonna hang down on that, these are okay, right? If you're doing something, which we'll talk about a little later, some people wanna know about like tomatoes and, and plants like that, bigger plants, uh, uh, Swiss chard, you know, if you're gonna leave it in here and it's gonna get kinda big, you might want a little bit of support. So one of the things you can do is cut it at an angle and then instead of trimming that wedge out, just use your razor blade and trim out a little wedge right there and it closes up enough to slide right inside and then that way you have a little bit of support for your plant that's just another idea I haven't really done that yet I put it on one or two pieces of kale out there I didn't really need it but because you guys are wanting to know about tomatoes and peppers I'm gonna go ahead and grow a few of those for you um, and we might go ahead and just try it you know with this method here so like I said they're easy to use they're easy to work with and you can't really do that with a cloning collar, right? So that's why I like pool noodles. All right, what's next? All right, let's see. One person asked, how do you refill it? And I showed that in one other video. And I think when we talked about making these, that we were talking about we have holes all the way around here, right? And if you take this and put it up against a wall, you're really not going to be getting any sun on the back, right? 
so we don't have like a hole in the back this one's a used bucket that I have used so it's a little dirty but I put a little hole for aeration if we ever want to put a tube what you can do is one of these rear holes if you're not going to use them for a plant or like this one where the handles like right in the way you can always just use this to pop that out and fill it all I do is take a bottle like a coke bottle cut it in half and put it in there and then you can fill it up really easy you can just if your bottles full too that you're filling with you can put it in there or you can get a funnel with a little offset it, it's really simple and then what you want to do is just put that back in and close it up because if you leave a big hole you're gonna get frogs in here and next thing you'll have one million tadpoles and and it won't be fun so that's just one way obviously if you have them stacked up the one on top you can pull the top off and just fill it up from there really easy and if you want to there's only three and a half gallons in here some of you said you know you can't lift them but you know if you're like me and you've got this like that you can just pop that off and you can you know fill the other one but I don't like stacking them and unstacking them once they're in place I just like to leave it so I leave one of these empty in the back and use that one if you've got it out in the middle and you've got plants in all of them you want to maximize your space you can always while the plants in there and I've done this for years on the downspouts people have asked me how do you refill the downspouts and I just pull one that has the plant pull it out leave the roots part way in there you know I just pull it out far enough for me to get the nutrients in there and put the plant back in you know no sweat that's what we like you know we're trying to make things easy we're not trying to make things really difficult so these are easy answers okay okay this is a popular one and we'll go over this I'll probably do this one in a whole nother video but just really quick to touch on it everyone asks because there's no pump right this is like cracky growing this is off-grid and they say there's no pump they always ask how do the plant survive in stagnant water why are you growing in stagnant water I I see stagnant like 40 or 50 times a day and to start with okay when you first put your nutrients in here it's static it's not stagnant stagnant it means that there's stuff that's decomposed in it and that's why you think of like rotting stuff or uh, um, a lake that's a little pond that's not moving anywhere just walk, uh, standing water and stuff decomposing and growing in it right when you first put water into here and you put the nutrients in it's not like that it's static it's not moving so there's a difference between static and stagnant now that on its own by itself if you take the nutrient water close it up and put it in a dark room somewhere it will last for a long while it won't turn stagnant same thing's gonna happen here the only way this goes stagnant is for number one for a bunch of stuff to grow in there like algae and stuff and for it to die go through the little cycle and everything right and then it might start to get a little stagnant or your roots if you let your plants um, get too hot and you let this nutrient solution heat up and the roots die and then it cools down and and goes back and forth and you get the roots dying and then you get new roots growing and the roots dying then you're getting a bunch of old roots in there and organic material and that can start to break down then if you have something like uh, broccoli uh, some plants like that that kind of have a little bit of an odor when the roots start to break down that water does smell a little bit like that but that's because it's a broccoli root and that not because it's like stagnant water so we're growing fast growing leafy greens that's what I want everyone to get started like so from the beginning you have to understand some of the stuff these are the basics right so if you learn how to do this and learn how to do it fast you're not going to worry about your water getting stagnant so when you put this stuff in there it's not stagnant it's static all right now the question no pump or aeration and no there's not and I know that most traditional hydroponics has pumps filtration water cycling through things uh, this does not this is just set up just like this and this being in a tower we're just stacking it on top of each other that's why I love this design if you guys saw our other ones that we made it was in the orange buckets and that one actually had a pump and it had irrigation going up through it and it was spraying and, and recirculating uh, that one had a pump and, and that one took a little bit of maintenance uh, you had to be vigilant you had to watch it if the pump went off or the the circuit breaker tripped or anything happened 
uh, something might have got clogged up, then all of your plants start to die in this tower, right? Maybe not the ones on the very bottom level where the roots could get to the nutrients in the bottom, but most of the other ones would start to fail. This one, if you have these stacked up, because it's not circulating between, because there's no pump, that each one of these is its own little environment. You have the plants in here. If anything goes wrong in this one, you've got your other ones. It's not going to affect your other ones. So we're not having water flow in between these. Each one of these is its own separate little container. And that's what is, is the beauty of the system. It makes it easy. You're worrying about little small things like this. It's portable. You can move it around. And there's just a whole host of benefits to this. Um, that'll be one of our other be uh, videos is, is just all the benefits. But no, there's no pump. There's no aeration. This is just sitting in here off grid. Drill some holes. Put some nutrient solution in it and your plants. We want to keep it easy. Okay, we get this one a lot too. How often do you change? Now, in traditional hydroponics, maybe the reason why a lot of people are asking in traditional hydroponics, you do have to keep the water really clean and you do have to keep changing it. You have to watch the pH, you have to watch your EC levels, you have to monitor a lot of stuff. And if anything starts to get dirty in here or like I said, the roots break down and start, you know, getting in there, it can clog up pumps, then you might have to like take everything out, change it, put fresh in, you know, and you have to keep it pristine, right? In this system, you don't have to worry about it. This is more like what Mother Nature's doing. So I rarely ever change them out. Uh, I think I've changed a few when I had something like Swiss chard or a tomato or something that was growing and it was like in there for like months, like six to eight months. I had a Swiss chard growing in one of these containers. We actually named it because it was going on like two years. Um, so after a while, yeah, you do get a lot of organic material built up in it and then I did change it out and we'll go over that in another video, but 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't change anything out. This thing goes through its entire cycle. You grow your plant, you take your little seedling in that, you put it in here, you grow it to a microgreen, to a baby green, and then you can even grow it to a mature leaf. Um, but I don't hardly ever change the nutrients in it. All we do is keep it topped off. And I think that comes to uh, another question, we'll check that off, is how often do you refill? Now, Refilling, a lot of you are making this mistake, and, and I mentioned this in one of my other videos when we're talking about making this, and because you can leave this for so long, they, they leave it and they're like, wow, this thing's gone for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and I haven't done anything, and then they come back and refill it. Your plants don't like that. Your, your plants are like us. They don't like change, right? If the, we keep changing things on you, every couple of days or every week you kind of get a little frustrated what they like is something that's constant so if they know your water levels at a certain level your nutrients are in there it grows air roots it gets comfortable your plants are happy you want to go ahead and just maintain that so what i did on all my other containers the downspouts it only held like a gallon right I kept it between, I always told people the golden rule was between half and three quarters. Now on here, there's a lot more mass on here. You don't want to let it go all the way down to half, right? Try to keep this as close to this top level as you can when you put your first put your plants in here. Come out every couple days, you know, it might be three, four days. It might even be a week, you know, depends on how big your plants are. But don't let this go down too far and just keep it filled up right to there because this has room from the bottom of these holes to the top of this there's your air right so you've got this little moist air gap here where it can grow air roots so you're not going to ever have to worry about drowning it out if you let this go way down here it's going to be reaching down there it's going to grow air roots all down here and then one day you're going to come in and go oh my god i got to fill it up and, and put three gallons in here all the way back up to here and all of a sudden your plants like you know but whoa we don't like this so as far as refilling, just try to maintain your level as much as you can. If, it, if you have a traditional garden, you're going out there watering every day, right? Two, three times a day, sometimes when it gets summertime. Keep an eye on this. You might not have to do it every day. It might be two, three, four days or whatever. But it depends on how big your plants are. Just don't let it get too low. Maintain it where, wherever you can get it and just maintain it. Just kind of leave it in there.
Now another thing is if you accidentally do let this go down and you weren't paying attention or you were on vacation, don't come right in and fill it all the way back up. Just fill it a little bit and let your plants acclimate. And if they feel like they're doing all right a day or two later, you know, put a little bit more and, and then work your way, you know, back up to where you get a comfortable level in there. All right, here's one too, mosquitoes. Now, one thing you want to keep everything closed up, right? So we drill little air holes all around here. If you want to, we talked about putting a little piece of screen on the inside or pantyhose. Some of you said cut little pieces of pantyhose and put, take them and just jam them into the hole like that. It allows air to get in and out and it keeps the bugs out. So if you go and harvest one plant, you know, you pull one plant out of here and you harvest it, don't leave that hole open. That might seem obvious, but I've seen some people do it. So keep everything closed up as much as possible. Another tip that a few of you out there have told me is what they do is get some old buckets that they don't use, any kind of container, and around their garden, they'll set these containers and then they'll go buy the mosquito dunks. They're the little tablets that you toss in water like your uh, fountains and that. And they're to control the mosquitoes and they toss those into the container so they put a few around the property around their garden and toss those in it and when the mosquitoes come around instead of trying to figure out how to get into here there's an open bucket of water they're usually drawn to that a lot easier than they are to your hydroponics so that i think that's just a cool tip i don't have much of a problem around here they spray from mosquitoes around the city um but if we ever do i'm going to give that a try Okay, nutrients. People ask what are the nutrients. Of course, I use the Master Blend. If you watch this channel any length of time, I use the Master Blend for 1838 tomato formula with um, calcium nitrate 1500 and Epsom salt. And I'll leave a link to that up above. You can just go check out that video. Some of these questions, not just this grow tower, but pertaining to like all of the hydroponics that I do. I have a playlist that says uh, frequently asked questions so this one will be in there and this one will be specifically about the grow tower but I've also got one that's just about our general growing that we do our off-grid growing so you can check out that playlist too but we do that and I mix up five gallons at a time um, I don't try to mix smaller portions I don't try to use like a teaspoon tablespoon it's uh, the same formula I've been using since I started so if you want to know about the nutrients, just go check out that video. It explains it more in depth. Um, I don't want to make this whole video about nutrients, but Master Blend is what I use. I want you guys to succeed, so I don't want to give you too many different choices. There's a bunch of other channels out there, and they use different nutrients and everything. You can look at different things, but here on this channel, we're just going to stick with that because I want people to get started off on the right foot. I want you to succeed. I want you to have fun, and I want you to keep on doing it. If you start in the very beginning and you get too much information and you have too many different variables, you're most likely going to fail, and then you'll just say, this doesn't work. So I want you to succeed, so that's why I only give you the one choice. This is what I do and I can point you in the other direction if you want to try other things out or if you live in another country where Master Blend is not available you know just try to get something that's as close to that as possible um, but other than that that's the one that I've used so if something ain't broke don't fix it right okay here's one I get a lot too uh, can you use fish instead of nutrients or bro put some goldfish in there you know or somebody saying you know I want to do aquaponics now, the reason why I'm into the off-grid hydroponics, I looked into everything when I first started out. Um, and I didn't even start out with hydroponics and everything. It was gardening, and then it was square foot gardening. It was the biointensive gardening. It was uh, uh, Larry Hall, uh, the gutter gardening. Um, th there's lots of things that I watched that I kind of drew inspiration from. Then I looked into all of the you know hydroponics, aeroponics, aquaponics, and everything. So um, I've tried it all. But this is the simplest way and I'll do another video and a lot of you already know why I'm doing cheap and easy and the easiest way um, but uh, aquaponics is not as easy as hydroponics the one thing is you've got a living animal involved in it this you've got plants you get a little careless and you screw up and you kill all your plants that's one thing you put a bunch of fish in there and you screw up you're gonna kill a bunch of fish you know, so there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just fish poop, plants eat the poop, plants grow and, and you have a bunch of food. There's 
a balance that goes into this when the fish poops there's something with called nitrates and nitrites and there's certain levels that have to be in there for everything to work in balance and when those get off balance either things suffer and they don't grow as well or things die which is much much worse so I don't like having that on my conscious I tried it in the beginning like me and Keely we had a huge swimming pool and I had fish in there um, I had a hundred gallon horse trough and we had fish in there Keely even went fishing one time and she caught a bunch of uh, bass and stuff and we put it in there it was you know just to experiment but when it got to the point where I was like just so nervous I was having to check on them all the time um, I just tossed the fish back in the lake and said I'm not gonna worry about it anymore we got to do this easy I can't stress out about taking care of hundreds or thousands of little living organisms when I'm trying to grow a plant you know I'm just trying to grow some lettuce to put on my sandwich and then I don't want to have to worry about 400 tilapia in my backyard so if you want to get into aquaponics you have to put in the work you have to study you have to do it right there's a lot I mean th this stuff doesn't come free right you're gonna have to get all equipment there's gonna be filtration there's gonna be all kinds of stuff that you have to do there's gonna be metering you're gonna have to pay attention to stuff it's gonna take constant work and constant energy aquaponics is nowhere near what hydroponics is so that's why we're starting over hydroponics here we're just doing cheap and easy this is something that everyone can do aquaponics it takes a little bit of work all right and here's another one that we're gonna really tackle in another video but I'll just uh, talk about it a little bit here it says will it grow in the heat in the hot weather now this the reason why I'm liking it um, I'm having an optimistic uh, outlook on it if you guys are just now finding my channel this is an experiment uh, if you go back and look at our videos a few videos ago we were just talking about doing this and building it so I was just bitballing putting questions out there people were like giving me comments and answers and, and together we all built this right so this is an experiment and we haven't gone through the summer yet but from my experience with the downspouts which only hold a gallon and I grow here in Florida all through the summer um, it gets up in the high 90s or feel like temperatures like in the hundreds so I know some of you out there are well over 100 so we're gonna have to work on it but I've, I've got a video coming out and we're working on how to cool these things down keep them cool just lots of different ways and you guys have gave me a lot of input this is gonna be a, a, a lot of suggestions from people that are growing around the United States since I'm just in one area and that's the the problem with trying to answer a question is we all live in different environments right humidity the amount of Sun you know the, there's just so many different uh, variables that it's hard to just give a, a concrete answer so I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing to deal with the heat down here in Florida and we're gonna give you some suggestions from other people that are you know around the country what they're doing and that video is coming up but I like this because our downspouts held like one gallon this one holds for about the same amount of plants this one holds three and a half gallons now that's one thing we've talked about a lot in other videos is that the the mass if you have water the more water you have the longer it'll stay cool um, we like to make the analogy of a swimming pool if you're at the swimming pool and you have a little frosty beverage so you're sitting by the pool and you're drinking your beverage and before you know it it's all warm and nasty right but then you go jump in the pool and it still feels cool is the the amount takes a lot longer to heat up so this is going to stay cool so if you can control the amount of sun it gets by moving it to where you know it's getting a lot of morning sun and then you get some shade that if you can like move these to the right spot in your yard that if this can stay cool enough during the hot part of the day and then it starts to cool down and this cools down a little bit too and then it's ready for the next day I'm, I'm liking it like I said because it's got more volume in it now we've also got another video coming up where we're working on another trick to um, use with these and the downspout so I haven't given up on the downspouts that's an integral part of this growing system um, that'll be another video I know this one's been long enough already but just uh, stick around because the next video is going to be everything you wanted to know about the grow towers I'm going to talk about building them um, maintaining them putting plants in them cleaning them out starting over so just all your questions you might have about 
actually putting one of these together, maintaining it, and going through your crop over and over, that one's going to be talking about the downspouts and that too because I start the plants off in the downspouts, move them over here. We'll talk about the reason why, but it works really well and I've got it going already. Just since we talked about putting one of these together, we've got that system kicked into gear out there and then it's just awesome. So I hope that that answers a lot of your questions. Like I said, this isn't all of them, but this is just some of them I get asked all the time. If I answer you with a link to this video, I'm not being, um, I'm not ignoring you or anything. It's just that I can't get to them all and I just figure this is the most efficient way for me to ju just get the information to people as fast as possible. So you can get out there, instead of watching YouTube videos, you can get out there and actually grow you some food. All right, we'll catch you next time. Lift, inspire, keep on growing. Be the change.